He accidentally has a time travel to 400 years later. He finds that mankind has disappeared for a long time. The city has become a wilderness. Therefore, he becomes the last human on Earth. He follows the navigation to the place where he passes through. He finds a skeleton there. He lifts the nameplate of the suit. It's his name. Isn't this his first time having time travel? The bullet hole on the head of the skeleton proves he is shot to death. Are there other survivors on Earth? Time back to 400 years ago. All plant life on Earth is extinct. The oxygen content in the air is drastically reduced to 3%. Thousands of people die of suffocation. Luckily, a technology company develops synthetic oxygen. But long-term inhalation of this kind of oxygen the body will have a rejection reaction of vomiting blood until death. It won't take long for mankind to become extinct. Ethan White is a tunnel worker for the city's power plant. That day, his boss suddenly takes him to the laboratory. She tells him that he can save the world. It turns out that researchers have developed a time machine. They just receive the message from 400 years later. And the content of the message is that Ethan is required to travel through the future. Since humans can send messages back 400 years shows that they have overcome the oxygen crisis. The boss asks him to travel through 400 years later to bring back the antidote. But Ethan doesn't want to take on the responsibility of saving all mankind. But when he comes back home, his wife vomits blood on the oxygen mask. She also has a rejection reaction. In desperation, Ethan agrees with his boss. No matter how many antidotes he brings back, his wife must be the first to use it. Soon, Ethan wears a special spacesuit and walks into the time machine. After a burst of lightning, Ethan lands in a patch of green. Unexpectedly, the Earth 400 years later the lush vegetation has long been restored to life. He follows the navigation to the location of the time machine. Ethan accidentally finds his skeleton. At first, he thinks it is a coincidental duplicate name. But after that, he finds the same navigator beside the skeleton. The skeleton still wears the same wrist device with him, but his light is green. He tries to activate the rusty navigator to play the last record. In the recording, he had a fierce dispute with a man. Then there was a gunshot. Who killed him? It soon gets dark. Hungry and tired, Ethan eats a kind of berry. But the fruit is poisonous. In the dimness, he sees a meteor passing by in the sky. A man suddenly appears and stabs him. When he wakes up again, he sees his good brother Jude. It turns out that his company finds that the toxin level in his blood is elevated based on the data sent back by the navigator. So they immediately send Jude to deliver antitoxin to Ethan. The two decide to go to the city center to find surviving humans. Unexpectedly, the lush vegetation here has long been restored to life. But the former prosperous city has become a wilderness. Why is mankind still extinct? Then who sent the message to 400 years ago? After searching for a while, they come to the location of the laboratory. Suddenly a ray of infrared light scans across his pupils. The laboratory's door automatically opens. A line of text is displayed on the screen of a computer. Welcome, Ethan White. Ethan presses the enter button. His wrist device suddenly tightens. With blood flowing out, the light on the wrist device turns green. The entire laboratory is instantly lit. A time machine identical to 2067 has started the countdown. After four hours, the time portal will be connected again. And they can come back to 2067. But Ethan thinks it's not that simple. He opens the video record of the laboratory. His father appears in front of him. It turns out that it's his father who develops the time machine. At that time they receive a message from 400 years later. And the content of the message is, send Ethan White here. At this moment the laboratory suddenly falls into darkness again. The laboratory's nuclear power is cut off due to a long period of lack of maintenance. The two immediately rush to the nuclear power control room in the city center. They must be repowered within four hours. Otherwise, they will miss the time portal and can't come back. Along the way, human skeletons are everywhere. When Ethan goes through the school, he involuntarily walks into a classroom. The familiar ring makes him recognize that this skeleton is his wife. He can't help crying. Jude comes over and comforts him that this may be the best result. Suddenly Ethan feels that this sentence is very familiar. He plays back the recording again. There is a dialogue exactly like the one just now. After a fierce quarrel, they hear a gunshot. The two are frightened. But how can Jude kill him? When Ethan was 10 years old, he and his mother were robbed. The robbers snatched their oxygen masks. When Ethan was about to die, it was Jude who rescued him. But time is running out, they can only let go of their grievances. They come back to the laboratory to reorganize the power supply. There are still 37 minutes before the time portal opens. Ethan opens his father's video again. It turns out that after his father develops the time machine, his boss wants to abandon all mankind. She wants to take a group of scientists to start a new life 400 years later. But his father firmly opposes this. At this time, the boss shoots him. But unexpectedly, after his father receives the message from 400 years later, he uses Ethan's DNA to lock the time machine. The time machine can only be activated when Ethan is 20. And Jude is a planted agent who is sent to her by the boss. Jude has been inseparable from Ethan for many years is to ensure that Ethan grows to 20 years old. So that they can pass through 400 years later. They want to let Ethan help them to open the time machine. 
At this time, Jude takes out the gun and aims at Ethan. Because his mission is to kill Ethan after the time portal is opened. But after many years of getting along with Ethan, Jude can't kill him at all. After struggling, Jude kills himself. At this time, there is only one minute left in the countdown. On the other hand, the boss in 2067 already line up in front of the time portal. As long as they successfully pass through, people in 2067 will be completely abandoned. At the critical moment, he cuts a bunch of plants and puts them into the time machine. These plants will bring the Earth back to life in 2067. After that, he comes to the screen to send a message to his father. Send Ethan White. To ensure that these plants will be sent back to 2067, he has to pass through 400 years later when he is 20 years old. Meanwhile, his father in another time and space receives a message from the future for the first time. It turns out that this dialogue is Ethan talks to himself. After done, Ethan finds that the skeleton at the door is gone. He comes to the cliff again. The previously deserted city has come back to life. He finally changes the past. But he can't come back to 2067. This is 2020 Australian movie. The movie setting is very novel. But at the same time, it also commits most of the common problems of time travel movies. If the entire time travels are set as a single universe, the male lead sends the sapling back that makes Earth back to life. But the skeleton of the male lead in the film becomes absurd. And the message he sends is both the result and the cause. This is a paradox. The setting of the movie is the usual time travel. Therefore, the ending that Earth has come back to life is unreasonable. Because the male lead can't change the time and space he is in by time travel. Although the movie is a little unfinished at the end, it's still an interesting movie.